This is your Weather Extreme video for Thursday, January the 10th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters sitting in for James Spann, who should be back with the Weather Extreme this afternoon. A look around the Skycam network today, and uh, we see that uh, Trustful, it's a little foggy. There's patchy fog out there. And at Jasper, the streets still look wet. There's some light rain occurring out there. Some of that light rain a little too hard to see on radar. The temperature trend for the last 24 hours is quite interesting. Uh, you see the rise to a high around 2 p.m., 2 to 4 p.m. or so at uh, my station. And then we kind of fell, and then we climbed around midnight. Boy, I tell you, the temperature trends the last several days, last week or so, have all been kind of crazy. We're dealing with this low, the surface low, and an upper low over Texas that is going to be ejecting out to the a north northeast today and tonight and into tomorrow and that will uh, unfortunately not clear us out it's going to keep the area under a southwesterly flow pattern which will be warm and moist there's a look at the upper air pattern for this morning and you can see that closed low over uh, western section of texas and you can see the southwesterly flow pattern that is keeping us in a warm and moist flow Storm Prediction Center is out looking a slight risk over southeastern Louisiana and a little bit of uh, southern Mississippi. And indeed, there is a tornado watch number one for 2013 uh, in effect until noon CST for the area of southwest uh, Mississippi and portions of southeastern and south central Louisiana. Day two and day three include no outlooks for any kind of Severe weather potential, but uh, just a few thunderstorms. Boy, it is just plain warm. Keep in mind that the average high for this date is around 53 degrees, and there we are. Almost every station in central Alabama is uh, at least anywhere from 2 to 10 degrees warmer than that at 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Just seems like the seasons have flipped. We're now into spring, and yet it's still supposed to be winter. Radar showing a good deal of precipitation back to our west, and that's where much of that precipitation is going to stay, but we're going to remain in a wet enough pattern that we just can't take showers and light rain out of the forecast any time in the near future. The uh, Hydrometeorological Prediction Center, HPC, outlooking um, QPF for the lower Mississippi River val Valley on the order of 4.5 to 5 inches. Uh, along the Mississippi River, and again, the weather pattern's just simply not changing much. Well, let's take a look at the 06E GFS, and we'll intersperse that with some European. And there is the uh, upper low moving up into the Red River Valley today, and with that, of course, the surface low moving up into Oklahoma, and the precipitation occurring uh, with just a conveyor belt of moisture coming out of the Gulf of Mexico into Louisiana and Mississippi. And the European pretty much in, in good agreement. A um, little, a little less on the intensity of the surface low, but I think the GFS in this case has probably got the better handle on it. Now that closed low becomes an open trough as it ejects uh, northeastward, reaching Ohio uh, by uh, 18Z uh, noon on Friday. And that should at least diminish the rain over our area, but we're going to stay cloudy. Uh, maybe a few peaks, a, little, a few breaks in the clouds, so we get a little peak at the sun from time to time. And again, the GFS uh, in agreement with the European, or the European in agreement with the GFS on uh, both the position of the surface low as well as the position of the frontal system. We stay under a southwesterly flow on Saturday, and that's going to be a warm day with a high being forecast of 74, which is only one degree from the record high of 75. And, you know, we might edge up enough to tie or perhaps even exceed that record. But we're dealing with this um, very um, long wave trough position back over the southwestern U.S. and a, certainly a strong trough back there. But again, with this conveyor belt of moisture coming out of the southwest and out of the western gulf, uh, we stay in a chance for showers and um, uh, rain areas. We move on to Sunday, and you can see there's a little energy, a piece of energy coming across the Tennessee River Valley. And of course, as that does, we enhance the chances for rain. So it looks like on uh, Sunday that we see a pretty good chance for some showers once again across the area. 
the southwesterly flow just can't seem to move. And as long as we keep this southwesterly flow, fronts are not going to move very far to the east and certainly uh, are going to be hung up around the area. And so we stay in a pattern with uh, moisture and shower chances, you know, extending from the mid-Atlantic states back into the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. And the European, uh, in pretty good agreement, I mean, they're not identical, and that's okay, but uh, they're certainly in pretty good agreement of the, the overall trend. Maybe a little different in the location, but uh, certainly not too far. So confidence fairly high for that. Now we almost get into a split flow pattern around Tuesday because we've got the major uh, a major trough moving through the north central US and the western Great Lakes area while a trough and uh, is hanging back almost to close low hanging back over the southwest US. But once again, we, we stay under a southwesterly flow pattern so the fronts are going to become parallel to the flow. And the question here is going to be just how how cool we can get and how much we can cool down as the the overall system kind of edges a little bit further to the east. And right now, it doesn't look like we're going to cool down that much. Uh, certainly nothing in the way of uh, any kind of uh, colder conditions, maybe, maybe getting into the lower mid-60s, but right now I'm even saying the uh, upper 60s. By Wednesday, uh, there is a, a much more defined split flow with the major trough over the Great Lakes in the western Great Lakes area while that uh, low uh, hangs back across uh, Texas and into northern Mexico and still that you know that just doesn't allow things to move to the south and southeast so we stay uh, wet and finally the GFS suggesting by Thursday the 17th that perhaps that uh, low that's been hanging back over the southwestern U.S. and over northern Mexico will finally kick out. And, of course, that brings the uh, – apparently is going to bring the long-wave trough position more into the eastern half of the country. And as it does, that means, of course, that the moisture will move to the east and to the southeast getting out of here. We could see some clearing, but also a, a good cool down. You see the 540 line coming all the way down uh, into northern Mississippi there. And the European, not exactly the same solution, uh, especially when you look at the 540 line, because it's certainly not as cold as the GFS. But we'll see. I mean, that's verging on voodoo country out there. And speaking of voodoo country, uh, what the GFS is uh, saying is that we're going to see that long wave trough position over the eastern half of the country uh, for at least uh, more of the extended or the second half of the two week period that the GFS encompasses. And indeed, we have a very interesting pattern around the 25th. Now, this pattern. I'm not forecasting a winter storm for our area, but this pattern is certainly uh, representative of a winter storm that could be affecting the area from, say, about Memphis, uh, Missouri Boot Heel area, all the way up into Ohio. Uh, so it's going to be a question of just where is the cold air at this point. But remember, this is voodoo. So we'll just have to watch and see how it evolves. Well, thanks for tuning into the Weather Extreme video. As I say, I think James Spann will be back with another version uh, later this afternoon around 4 p.m. Hope that your day is a good one and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.